Hey there, this is Handyman007, and in this video, I'm going to share with you everything I learned from the time I even considered replacing our 3-year-old 1.5 horsepower split-type conventional AC all the way to 2 months after we have been using this 2-horsepower split-type inverter AC. If you're someone who's looking for a huge reduction in your electricity bill, who wants to experience a different type of cooling, who is planning to eventually shift to a solar power system instead of relying on the power grid forever, or who simply wants to upgrade to a more energy-efficient and eco-friendly AC technology, then this video is for you. So let's begin. Did you know that the world's first residential inverter air conditioners were released by Toshiba in 1981 in Japan? Yup, the technology has actually been around for four decades. But personally, I only became vaguely aware of inverter ACs in 2014. At that time, my biggest but limited understanding on inverter ACs was that they are more energy efficient over normal ones and therefore not too heavy on the electric bill. That's it. And even four years later, in 2018, at a time when I was actually canvassing to buy our first AC for my family, I still ended up buying this 1.5 horsepower Matrix split-type normal AC. Why? Well, I'll give you two reasons. The first reason was, inverter ACs in general were too expensive for my budget. Just to give you more perspective, I bought our 1.5 Matrix non-inverter for only 13,263 pesos. If I went for an inverter type of the same horsepower, it would have cost me 3 to 6 times as much, especially with the more popular brands. Again, this was all back in 2018. But in 2020 onwards, I started to notice the price gap between inverter and non-inverter ACs had begun and continued to decrease across different brands, popular or otherwise. Today, it's just a 29% to 59% gap compared to the 111% to 275% difference from 3 years ago. For example, Matrix 1.5 horsepower non-inverters sell for about 15,500 pesos, while their inverter counterparts sell for about 24,600 pesos. But I know, 29 to 59% is still quite a price gap. Which leads us to the second and more important reason why I finally switched over to inverter technology. And that is, I now have substantial data. Let me explain. After I had our non-inverter AC installed back in April 2018, I had zero idea how long we would use it on a daily basis or across the different seasons of a year. When the first electricity bill came in a month after the installation, our amount due was 3,000 pesos more than the usual. At first, I didn't treat it as a big deal. I rationalized, well, that's the price we have to pay for a little more comfort and convenience. Second bill came in, it was 4,000 pesos more. So my wife and I agreed to be more mindful of how long we use the AC, even setting a cap of 10 hours per day. Third bill came in, it was 5,000 pesos more. I did some research and learned that the prescribed optimal thermostat setting should be from 24 to 26 degrees Celsius, even setting the AC in dry mode more frequently than the usual cool mode. But to make a long story short, our 1.5 HP non-inverter AC was responsible for 3,000 pesos to 6,000 pesos of our total monthly electric bill. Because you have to understand, our electricity provider, Meralco, would occasionally increase their rate per kilowatt hour. So even if we heavily regulated our usage to become more consistent, our monthly bill will still increase over time because we are charged more per kilowatt hour among other questionable line items they include on top of our actual power consumption on every bill. In September 2020, 30 months since our non-inverter AC was installed, I finally realized that the AC that's supposed to be giving my family comfort and convenience was actually giving us more stress. It's like every time it's switched on, the first thought that comes in is, there goes our next bill. So I sat down and started calculating for the true price of our convenience in the last 30 months. And you know how much it all summed up to? 135,000 pesos. Just imagine how we could have put to better use the extra money if we were able to save even just half of this in almost 3 years.
In choosing the right AC, the most important step is choosing the right size or cooling capacity. Not only does this maximize the cooling efficiency of your unit, but also gives you the most value for your money. Today, depending on where you are, AC manufacturers may represent and advertise their product's cooling capacity in horsepower or HP, watts, and or British thermal units or BTUs. And yes, it is possible to mathematically convert these units of energy to one another if we want to do an apple-to-apple -apple comparison. But since I'm in the Philippines and we use horsepower, I'm just going to use that to keep things simple. And in choosing the right horsepower, we first need to know the size of the area or room an AC is supposed to cool down. For example, three years ago, after measuring the length and width of our bedroom, I calculated that it's about 25 square meters. Then I went online, searched for a generic HP calculator, entered the measurements, and voila! It recommended that I go for a 1.5 horsepower AC. And so I ended up buying a 1.5 horsepower split type AC, believing that I would get the most value for my money. And boy, was I so wrong. It was only three years later, when I became more prudent in looking for a replacement, I learned I needed to consider more than just our total floor space to match the right horsepower. Also, a common misconception is that it's okay for ACs to be overpowered than underpowered. Actually, an AC needs a power output level that closely matches the needs of the space it's trying to cool. On one hand, an underpowered AC will keep its compressor working hard all day without ever making the space cool and comfy. On the other hand, an overpowered one will engage in a phenomenon known as short cycling, turning off and on rapidly throughout the day. Since air conditioners spend far more energy turning off and on than they do simply running, it can be incredibly wasteful, driving up monthly costs as well as subjecting the air conditioner to a great deal of wear and tear. That means an overpowered AC will be far less cost-effective and will likely run into trouble long before they should. Even inverter types are not immune to this situation. I discovered that certain brands actually have specific horsepower calculators on their websites. And in entering my numbers in those calculators, I was also asked to enter other related information, such as the climate, the number of windows, insulation factors, heat-producing appliances in the area, and the number of people who are staying in the room. And every manufacturer will have varying estimates on how much horsepower is needed. Why? Because different manufacturers design their products differently with different parts and even use different refrigerants. So my advice is, depending on what brand you are shortlisting, use their horsepower calculators to arrive at the right HP recommendations per brand. In the video description below, I have listed the HP calculator links of some of the most common brands in the Philippines. If you are in a different country, I'm sure popular brands will have the corresponding HP calculator on their websites. Alright, so after using a few HP calculators, do you now go ahead and buy the brand and model recommended? Heck no! Don't commit the same mistake I did where I decided to purchase a 1.5 horsepower AC purely based on some online HP calculator. I was so naive in comparing all the 1.5 horsepower models across different brands and simply choosing the one with the lowest price tag. I did not do my due diligence in consulting a technician to perform a site inspection first, which I terribly regretted because in the long run, we ended up losing more money to electricity bills and maintenance costs. And if you read carefully, and you should, every manufacturer will have this disclaimer. Consulting certified AC technicians and having them do an on-site inspection of your space is a critical step in picking the right AC. It will not only give you a more accurate idea on how much horsepower is really needed, but also other valuable things to consider, such as the type of AC best suited for the space, a window type or a split type, the right AC efficiency rating, the cost of installation, compliance to electrical codes and local laws, or any other considerations you wouldn't have thought about without the proper experience and expertise. Besides, most technicians offer on-site inspection and evaluation for a very minimal rate, usually even for free. And that's what happened when I was buying our replacement AC. After an AC technician conducted an on-site inspection, they recommended that the right horsepower for our bedroom space and situation is actually 2 horsepower and not 1.5. At this point, you probably have a better idea if you are going for a normal AC or an inverter AC, a window type AC or a split type AC. 
and of course the appropriate AC cooling power for the space you are intending to install one. But out of the many AC manufacturers out there, what are the things you need to do and consider in choosing the right brand for you? Where do you actually buy one? Are online sellers safe? And how do you pick the right technician to install one for you? Also, did using a 2 horsepower inverter split type AC really resulted in a huge reduction of our monthly bill? These questions and so much more will be answered in part 2 of this video. So, if you aren't already, be sure you are subscribed and have turned on the bell notification so you don't miss the conclusion of this video. This is Handyman007 and I'll see you in the next video.